We got a headline today from New Brew Magic 2012. You'll find his link below or in the comments section. If you find the comments right alongside the video, we're actually live streaming. Join in the conversation. You'll see the comments scrolling down through. And I do read the comments each night or the next morning. Well, some that night and the rest of the next morning if that's what happens. It's like a little book for me sometimes. And I got to know a lot of people here, I think. Now, Nubru Magic has 3,000 views on Kate's video, and there's a link below to Kate's original video, but you can get uh, Nubru's Magic over there too and jump in the conversation. That video has been uploaded numerous times, I think like a dozen times. Looks like I'm the only person who didn't upload it. That'll come back and bite me. And I don't really do that for some reason. I'll have to think about that one. i got to make a playlist on my front page for Fukushima is what i got to end up doing pronto. Just so everybody's got a kickoff point, and that way I can gather up something from everybody. I think that's a pretty good idea. Uh, USA Today radiation triple in some albacore tuna off the west coast after Fukushima. After Fukushima. A after Fukushima. I'm gonna start up my other computer because I got no visuals. I got the new one all formatted, blah, blah, blah. The camera doesn't work. I was going to do a documentary today, but I had to run the town. Oops. Hang on. I'll get a little louder here. I just want to make sure everything is working before I continue. Oh, Mr. Computer. Come on, give it up. There we go. Please stand by. Yep, there we go, I think. Yep. Life is good. Life is good. Two minutes, 29 seconds in. It usually takes me five minutes to warm up. If you're not familiar, skip ahead. Did I pull any wheelies, Mickey? Ha ha ha. No, I didn't. I'm, I'm an old fart. I don't do stuff like that anymore. And I'm not telling. Miss Milky the Clown is here. Woo! Miss Milky, we send you hugs all the time. You see, you're really working hard. Uh, for the last couple of weeks here, you got back into it. Ha ha, we knew we'd drag you back in there. We knew you couldn't stay away. But it wears you down, and I hear you. Some days I just want to stop. Just, just stop. It was like that today, lethargic, and I just, damn it, I am not, uh, you know, if I, if I can't wind up the energy, then we're in a lot of trouble. A small crippled bastard can't come out, excuse the language, I know it bugs people, but, uh, okay, let me keep going. So, I got a good one for us tonight, ooh, um, so there's a link below to the actual article. And I was going to pay the $35 and rent it for 48 hours. Uh, but I went and looked up uh, all the people that helped him. This is a study about tuna. And he had tuna before and then tuna after. And they seen a, a, a minuscule, itty bitty, weeny, tiny, maybe, kind of, if... Uh, increase of cesium-137 they didn't check for strontium-90 there was 30 times more strontium-90 came out of Fukushima they didn't check for uranium and plutonium they didn't check for 1100 other radio nucleoids ionized particles and atoms and everything else no why do that they can uh, just check for CC-137. And, you know, the real question, I think, about all of this is if you go over and look at his Twitter account, the, the main guy who's piped out there, Delvin R. Neville, if you go look him up, he's actually a gamer and a nerd. Just wonder bars. The whole Pacific Ocean depends upon uh, the new poster child that's a nerd and... 
a video gamer, could we possibly be in more trouble uh, than having something like that happen to us? But don't worry, we got Jason A. Jason Phillips. Now, if you look him up, it's actually Jason A. Phillips. So I don't know why he put his name A. Jason Phillip in on that particular study because this is from the ACS publication. This is where they published it to. And if you look up uh, Jason A. Phillips, which is the same person, you'll find 25 uh, academic studies. He likes studying poop, human poop, human feces. Pretty cool. And Richard was the other guy. Hang on. They make it really easy sometimes. Where's Richard to? That's uh, Neville. Oh, uh, Phillips A. J. Hang on, I'll get it. Oh, ba -ba. Richard, will you too, buddy? Hang on. Higley, oh, I'll get to her in a second. And uh, Brodeur, Richard. Enzyme and studies and retrograde regulation mutants of yeast. Uh, he's got four studies there. And nothing. You know, why is, and trace levels of uh, Fukushima disaster radionucleides in the East Pacific albacore. Now, that's really strange. Phillips, he's got 25 studies, most of them on poop. And Catherine A. Higgs, Higley. <laughs> She's a doozy. Hang on, that brings up, I got a PDF file there. Um, let me open that up and get her quote. I want to get, damn you, I'll pay for that, here we go, except, come on, give it to me, close the program, didn't, blah, blah, anyway, she said, um, I'll open it up on this, I'll open it up on this computer, I want to get that exact quote, because that was, Oh yeah, she said, um, <laughs> do it again. He said, she said, they said, we said. We'll get it. Oregon. Uh, where's that PDF file, Dana? I got a doozy, sorry folks. This computer was supposed to work. Not do this to me. That's okay. Oh, that's it there. Neutron Summer 2011 was the name of the PDF file, if you're looking for it. I had to do a lot of hunting a day for this shit. Uh, busy future for fuel test efficiency. And Catherine Higley. Uh, 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 ba -ba -ba. Anyway. She talked about... She got dragged into a conversation where she said that the reason they were finding radioactive material in the drinking water, I think it was in Oregon, or maybe it was another state, was because of the cancer patients, not Fukushima. Right? Now, she's an old war horse. She's an old ground and pounder for the nuclear industry. She's an apologist, 100% for the nuclear industry. She's got a lot, a uh, 25-year history of just being a bootlicking, cheerleading lapdog for, well, you know, nuclear power plants are the military-industrial complexes, directed energy weapons, isotope, which is their fuel for directed energy weapons production facilities. That's what a nuclear power plant, the byproduct is nuclear power, right? Because they're using a million gallons a minute, and they're boiling all that water, all the phytoplankton and everything in the water. Nuclear power, nu the nuclear process by definition is destructive. It destroys a million gallons a minute. The phytoplankton are the very basis of the food chain. You're killing all the creatures, to trillions of creatures. Like in a glass of water, trillions of creatures, uh, 100 million of them are phytoplankton. They're the basis of the food chain and the basis of oxygen, nuclear power plants are destroying those creatures, the very basis of the ocean. The ocean is a soup of life itself. Um, now let me keep going here because I got quite, uh, 
<laughs> quite the... Now, they're looking for radionucleoids, allegedly, and they have no history in looking for radionucleoids. They got no history in radioactive materials. They got no history on the in low-level, insignificant, indigenous, normal, harmless, everyday uh, background radiation at best. They didn't go out and do studies and, say, look at for turtles or birds or insects on the coastline. They didn't look at um, the sea life in just, you know, on the shoreline where this stuff washes up. They didn't look for any kind of, uh, you know, like the creatures, the mammals in the ocean, the, the otters or anything like that. The mussels, the sea urchins, the sea cucumbers, the starfish. They didn't look at anything like that. They were looking at tuna. It's a very strange thing they got done there. And they got a whole lot of traction in the day. You, you can imagine how big the coastline actually is. Like British Columbia, uh, once again, uh, it's 26,000 islands. Now I dove that uh, for 14 years in both oceans, the Pacific and Atlantic, six hours a day on the ocean floor on the coastlines and deep sea. But six hours a day, up to 128 days without coming ashore. Six hours a day on the ocean floor. So I know a thing or two. And if you were going to do a study looking for a radioactive material and the harms it had on the coastline or the ocean, you would look at the coastline itself. You got to think about the distance is 5,500 miles. But you got to think about just three melted reactors and a four at one that caught fire and detonated. All four of them detonated, right? All four of them are hemorrhaging into the ocean. They detonated the fuel rods and the cores. There's three melted cores. Each reactor is 100, uh, 300, three times bigger than Chernobyl. Each reactor is different fuel than Chernobyl, much more dangerous, much more ionized, already re-ionized. There's already been to the chain reaction. These are X missiles that have been taken to Fukushima to make wicked isotopes for directed energy weapons. And Devil, or the Oregon State University, has sanctioned this and put it out there. Publications have published it. And this is why you can't trust any of the academics. I mean, they lock these things up and I can't, I got to pay $35 just to go find out what he really done, what he really looked at. So they keep it away, right? And then they put out the synopsis and then that's what everybody's running by. It's a total fabrication of what he done there. It's a misrepresentation and an embarrassment to the academic uh, world when history looks back at this stuff. They're going to say these people were outright lawyers and why is he doing a study and why why isn't we getting a nuclear scientist doing a study why do we got these insignificant dummies these gamers these nerds doing a peer review study and getting all this traction why are they put up on a pedestal why ain't we seeing all the nuclear scientists is there is there some kind of a lack of nuclear scientists they don't got none at Oregon they got one of the you know, this is one of the biggest institutions, the second biggest institutions in America for its scope and this volume of what it covers. And then it locks it all away behind Elsewhere Springer and Wiley and the other academics. And Elsewhere Springer and Wiley got 20,000 of the publishing houses, 4,800 academic peer review studies every day. Most of them shit like his study about the albacore. That's just shit study. That's garbage. That's, that's junk. Why is he doing the study? Why ain't we using nuclear scientists? Actual scientists. Why is little maggots like that and his cronies? I mean, he's insignificant compared to the other cronies on that study. The Catherine, um, hang on. She's like an old war horse at this game. Richards and Phillips, I mean, they should have been the one, uh, well, Phillips should have been right up there, or Catherine Higley. Why did he put uh, Devin Neville up there? I guess he's a throwaway dummy, dummy nerd and a dummy video gamer, right? Just lives a stupid life, insignificant life, and doing papers for the university, whatever they give him money for. Sorry, whatever they'll give him money for, he'll do it, right? He don't care. He's just a university bootlicking cheerleading lapdog. 
and he's willing to do whatever it takes to fit in, as long as it don't interfere with his Twitter account, or his video games, or his Batman, or his Robin, and his other shit he got up on that side, Superman crap. He's like a child. He's got the mentality of a child, of a little child. And we got someone like that making decisions. Someone like that that people are going to create policies behind. Someone like that who got no history, who doesn't bring anything into context, is put up on a pedestal by USA Today and RT and all the media out there. Has universities, why can't we find, why do we got the Ken Buesler was thrown in with that today too on USA Today and RT? Why did they put Ken Buesler in there? A habitual lawyer in the nuclear industry, an apologist and a propagandist. He's, a, he's not even a nuclear scientist. Where the fuck are the nuclear scientists? Why do they got to march out these little creeps, these little nerds, these little fucking idiot video gamers? Have we degenerated so much that that's what we got to turn to now? Is a friggin' Batman, Superman, video game nerd for our information? Better off going watching fucking Fox. Excuse the language. It's, it's, uh, let me keep going here because I'll just, I'm not very happy. I'm not very happy. He doesn't look at the sea anemones. He doesn't look at the sea birds. And he's not looking at the insects, the, the dragonflies. You know, you got to think about all the kingfishers and all the, 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 the creatures that are feeding on the coastline. You got to think about how this stuff came into your coastline. Hang on. Think about what I'm going to tell you here for a second. Oregon. Oregon. And now, like he says, it's the same dose as spending a couple hours in a basement with radon gas in it. With radon gas in it. I looked you up. You got no peer review studies on radon. What the fuck would you know about radon gas? Do you know a single person out there that died of radon gas, buddy? Do you? You creepy little fucker. Excuse the language. Meanwhile, Oregon State itself plans to hold its next quarterly radiation test on May the 13th. Maybe they should shut the fuck up for a change. Back in February, Ken Buesler of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. By the way, you know, how is it you can find nothing, literally nothing, insignificant, 137, yet your EPA in your country, in your state, has 7,400 Beckwells of cesium-137 as a standard in your drinking water, but you're not going to find it in the salt water. Do you, do you get what they're doing to you? They're using you. You're just a throwaway little gamer, little Twitter head, little fucking Batman head, little insignificant university student. They let the other academics in there to help you look stupid, basically. Saying that it's going to be too diluted to pose a health concern. It's, it's St. Paddy's Day. Think about a 1,000 pound truck, 1,440 times a day, being dumped into a 4,000 mile river. Because that's what's going on here at Fukushima, 300,000 tons. 1,440 minutes a day, 1,000 pounds of dye that doesn't salute in the water, that doesn't lose its color, its intensity, and you pour a 1 ton, 1,000 pounds every day, every minute into the, into the ocean. You don't stop, rather, into a river. You do that for three years. You get in the plane, you fly down river, where are you going to stop seeing the dye tool? It's going to be right into the friggin' ocean, right? And every lake and every estuary and every community is going to be covered in that dye because it was liberated through evaporation, through rain, through spray. And you're saying to everybody, shut the fuck up and don't pay attention. I'm a little nerd. I'm a little gamer boy. I took a few minutes out of my game, out of my idiotic video game. I looked at it, and I don't see it. You didn't check. You didn't look for anything. You done a test on 137, now you got all kinds of traction. So you can fool and deceive, manipulate the innocent and the people who paid for you to do that. You're doing that because we paid for it. You're, everything in that university, your community paid for it. You stabbed them all in the back by doing this. You didn't take anything else in the context and you didn't speak out and said, hey, by the way, we only done this and that's it. We didn't look at all the other factors. We just looked at these little tunas. That's not a study. That's an embarrassment. It's embarrassing to your family, to, you, to your friends, to yourself, to your future. 
because the hounds are not going to let you forget them. I can guarantee you. To say that St. Patty's Day, every minute of every day for three years, it only at one mile an hour, the ocean goes 24 miles in a day. In 229 days, that's 5,500 miles. And every day behind that was another 300,000 tons of dye, radioactive dye. Every day, 300,000 tons of radioactive dye, 300 tons of radioactive dye, rather, hemorrhaging into the ocean. What do you think is going to happen? If you had a big dye factory on the coastline and 300 tons of dye that never dissipates for thousands of years hemorrhages into the fucking ocean. Just because you can't see cesium and the radioactive nuclides going into that ocean from the three melted, 100% melted reactors. Each reactor is three times the size as Chernobyl. Anyway. Gotta watch my language here. Everybody getting upset because I swear. Radiation data from Seattle area survey may be withheld by the feds for the national security purposes. July 11, 2011. A helicopter flying over urban areas of King and Pierce counties will gather radiological readings. July 11 to the 28th. The U.S. Department of Energy Remote Sensing Laboratory Aerial Measurement System. There's a fucking mouthful for you. Will collect baseline levels of radioactive materials. To Canada, Don, that there's a study down below. The Health Canada went out there and flew along our coastline on the 18th and the 19th of March and it was a snowstorm, an invisible snowstorm that never went away for months. It updated our entire coastline because it was St. Paddy's Day in the atmosphere too. It was aerosol. You got to think about these reactors. A gram is a million watts of uranium is a million watt putting out a million watts it's got a 4.5 billion year half-life but see a half-life is a lie again a half-life is times 10 so it's 45 billion years and so it's like that for all the isotopes that's the rule of thumb and he looked at cesium but he didn't look at plutonium and strontium and uranium it's the most popular deadliest stuff coming out of there or the other 1100 there's 3100 isotopes 260 of them are, are normal that are harmless He's equating radon with man-made, ingesting man-made radioactive hot particles is an absolute mockery. The NRC commissioner, August 4, 2011, Fukushima was not unthinkable at all. Unthinkable at all. The secret that everybody knows but nobody wants to say anything about. I mean, you, got, you put all these reactors on a fault line. Nuclear expert, I should make clear that if the EPA safe drinking water levels doesn't apply to rainwater, nothing does. But see, it didn't because the EPA, during that national security, was increasing the level to 7,400 becquels a cubic meter of your drinking water right across North America. And that's a standard in your drinking water right now. So him going out there and finding or claiming there's nothing there is so insignificant goes against the very foundation that there's 7,400 becquels in your drinking water of cesium-137. Not counting the 134, not counting the strontium-90, or the americium, or the neptunium, or the plutonium, and their daughters, and uranium-234, 235, and 236, and 238s, and 239s, and plutonium-238, 239, 240, 240, blah, 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 blah. Ah. <laughs> Oregon criminalizes permaculture, claims the state ownership over all rainwater pond swales restricted, and jail time for violators, July 29, 2012. See, what was going on here is the EPA knew everything was completely, and if I had my graphics work, and I would have the graphs from the academics that actually looked at us. There's a whole lot of that out there from France, from Norway, from Switzerland, from the government, the models originally from March 2011. USA Today puts out the headline. Hey, cesium and iodine both at least 600% above the EPA maximum containment levels in Hawaii milk, right? Cesium and iodine. Iodine with an eight day half life times 10 is 80. Enough to give you cancer if you get it. And you did, because there were snowstorms of it. it. came right through your country over and over and over and over and over. And it had cesium with it. This stuff doesn't fly alone. You think that's going to fly alone? 
You think the cesium came over here and said, ah, we're going to leave the strontium over, strontium's going to go that way, and uranium's going to go this way, plutonium's going to go that way. If one's here, everything else is here. They talk about iodine-131. They don't mention iodine-132. It was 10 times more coming at you. It, it ionized, it radiated your, your thyroid nine times more effectively. There was 20 to 30 times more iodine-133 came along with it. Don't forget, when you got these huge massive numbers, one out of uh, every four iodine-131 is an iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. And there's just 1,100 of these creatures that we're worried about. That there's, like I say, keep going. By March 21st, 2011, five nuclear isotopes from Fukushima were detected in Seattle. It was iodine-131, 132, um, cesium-134, cesium-137. They never looked for the other stuff. But they detected the stuff they did look for. That was University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, nuclear plants that may be affected by the same control rod issues were Apiri, Oyster Creek, Clinton, Dresden, LaSalle, Quad City, Limerick, Pasadena, or Pennsylvania, Peach Bottom, Fitzpatrick, Vermont, Pilgrim, Grand Gulf, Brown Ferry, Browns Ferry, River Bend, Hope Creek, Nine Mile Point, New York, Fermi, Brunswick, Hatch, Dwayne Arnold, Cooper, Monticello, and Columbia. All of these places got serious vulnerabilities if they have an earthquake. They're all very vulnerable to a meltdown and releasing all that radioactive material. They're releasing radioactive material into your community all the time. Those spent fuel rods are boiling off 100, 120,000 liters a day. And that's releasing all kinds of radioactive iodines, serious radioactive isotopes in your community. These rods have went through the chain reaction. They have to keep them in pools, deep pools, and keep pouring water perpetually on these things for years to cool them down. It's the stupidest thing on the planet. We make elements, like the sun makes elements, rather. We destroy elements. And like iodines and, and these irradiated elements that, you, you know, the nuclear military industrial complex is directed energy weapons production, fuel production facilities, which is what you call a power plant, make, don't exist on the moon. Those elements don't exist on Mars. They don't exist in the Milky Way. They're not supposed to be anywhere on Earth. They don't exist in our periodic tables. And I can't deal with these friggers coming out and lying. 40 million Beckwolds of iodine-131 in a single bed of kelp off Southern California, March the 30th, 2012. 40 fucking million. That, that's only iodine. What about all the other radio? Do you think iodine just travels by itself? No, because it's got a ha eight day half-life. It's okay, it'll all be gone in eight days. Times 10, so 80 days. Right away, they're lawyers. The minute you hear any one of them say half-life and don't say, by the way, that's times 10. So people don't get fucking stupid and confused and fight with each other over Ninian shit. When it's not Ninian, this is how they do it. You try to have a conversation and say, well, it's got an eight-day half-life. No, it's times 10. The jet streams at 100 miles an hour is 2,400 miles in 24 hours. In three days is on the other side of North America. In the NOAA chart, in the NOAA graphs, it showed that North America, in a 40-day graph, was completely blanketed in massive amounts. They say they only showed 137. Do you think that stuff doesn't all wash out down to the coastline? Huh? Do you think all that stuff don't get washed out to the coastline, to the shorelines, where they're going to try to blame it on radon? Well, all of a sudden, radon's a real big thing now. None of those people on that study actually produced a peer review study on radon, so how could they equate it with radon? That's, you know, the stupidest thing imaginable. Cesium from a chain reaction, ionized, radiated, has nothing to do with radon. It's a different thing. Yeah, radon's bad if you can get a big enough concentration. I never heard of a single person that died 
and died because of radon in their house. And if there was, he'll be or they'll be the only people ever on this planet associated with that. That's more about everybody's looking for radon. That's more about the government looking for another uranium deposit to build another mine to make more hideous ionized radiated particles and atoms and isotopes that don't exist on the moon or anywhere else in our universe and are scourged to our planet. There is nothing on this planet. All breast cancer is directly related to ionized radiation. All of it. The boys rainwater, which is not too far from Oregon, had the highest levels of radioactive material up to April the 3rd, 2011, 80 times the amount of iodine-131 allowed in drinking water. See, because what they do, like Ken Buzler does it all the time, where he equates 7,500 beckles of potassium-40 in your drinking water, right? Potassium-40. It's in your clothing. It's in everything. If you eat a banana with 12 beckles, you off-gas to 12 beckles as homeostasis. It's irrelevant. You drink a glass of water with 7,500 7, beckles of potassium-40, you off-gas 7,500 beckles of potassium-40. So what? Why is it in this conversation? What the fuck has this got to do with E equals MC squared, you might ask yourself. Well, the only thing it's got to do with it is you're able to use these numbers to obfuscate what the other numbers mean. Oh, you got 7,500 beckles in your drinking water. Don't worry about it. Potassium-40. People don't know any better. They try to put their fate in the academic community and they roll out the little gamers, the little video gamers, the little tweeter heads, the little Batmans, right? Because they don't know any better. He's home drunk now with the frat boys, chasing some girls around a lot. 80 times the amount solved, 7,500 times 80, right? Because that's what they do. They equate everything with drinking water. 7,500 beckles in a glass. So what they're trying to say to you was 80 times the amount of iodine-131 allowed in the drinking water. There is nothing allowed in the drinking water. It's a, it's a nuclear release from a chain reaction. Right? So the, these numbers and these words are very important. Unprecedented spike of 1,501 atoms of radioactive sulfur... And I got a link below a peer review study about the sulfur, about the buckyballs, the peroxide, urethal buckyballs, right? And so they ingest the, the, the atoms and the particles from the chain reaction because you're spraying salt water on the melted reactors at Fukushima for the first month nonstop, 40 days nonstop. They were pumping, you know, like 80 million becquels of cesium and strontium a liter or a centimeter, a cubic centimeter, out of the basements of unit 5 and 6 and 4 even, and pumping it on unit 3 and 2 and 1. And so this created these buckyballs that are not solutable in water, that are highly transportable, and that, you know, once again, this hasn't stopped going into the ocean. The, the site is covered with broken rods releasing neutrons and x-rays and gammas and betas and alphas, like you can't even imagine, that it came from an extraordinarily volatile chain reaction of materials that have already been ionized and radiated, you know, for, and have been sitting in missile silos for decades. It's frightening. This is a, the MOX fuel from Unit 3 at Fukushima is considered 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And we got people like this who ignores the EPA standard of 7400 is normal in your drinking water of cesium-137, a man-made radioactive material, and says, oh, but we're not finding none in the ocean. <laughs> it's all in your water. It's okay. Don't worry about that. We got 7400 beckles a cubic meter in your water, boy. Don't worry about the fucking tuna. Worry about what you're drinking in your tap. Worry about your sink is ionized and radiated. The pipes in your community are ionized and radiated. Your filters are ionized and radiated. And our universities are not going to try to solve any of this problem. They're too busy trying to bury these problems. With video gamers and tweeters and Batman and people that study poop. And people that got no right to be putting out fucking papers. No right to be writing these papers. And that institution got no right to, to publish those papers. We didn't pay you to put out fraudulent papers. 
We paid you to do academics. We pay for the heat, the lights, the expendables, your tenors. We pay for the snow removal. We pay for your fucking people to clean your floors. And what you do is you lock up all the academic peer review studies in the ivory towers. You don't. If we had 4,800 peer review academic studies of moral that were published, and we took all those institutions and universities and classrooms and students and expendables and budgets and put them to work on solving some of our friggin' issues, just one single day worth of uh, institutions that were published and set them to work on solving simple issues, we wouldn't have those issues no more. Instead, they'll pour endless money into the nuclear industry, into background radiation, to confuse everybody, to manipulate it. It has to stop. The nuclear industry is dead. It's fucking dead. You're not getting no pensions. You ain't got no future. Stop doing your courses. Go start doing something else for your future jobs. This industry is dead. It's history. It's accumulative what's going on in that ocean. It's St. Patty's Day all day, nonstop in that friggin' ocean. Every minute there's a thousand pounds of radioactive dye. Look at it that way, going into the friggin' ocean, you probably get it. A thousands of miles of clouds are picking that up every day out of the ocean and lugging it way the fuck in across your continents. It's airborne, it's into the upper troposphere and lower troposphere, upper atmosphere. It's aggregated. You got to think about how the ocean works. If it goes down and rains into the ocean, these are one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. The ocean currents bringing up the nutrients from the ocean floor will bring that right back up, and that will radiate the the phytoplankton at the surface where they're breeding and feeding. The most important part of the ocean. It gets it on the way down, and then it's brought right back up again, because that's how the ocean works. And here we are, we got to come out and defend this. 1,501 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter, cubic meter of air was detected in the California air. From Fukushima, the plume is predicted to, use, to reach the U.S. West Coast in April 2014. The plume! What do you think, there's just one plume came out and is working its way across the ocean? Is that what you think? There's 300,000, 300 tons rather, a day. 300 tons of extraordinarily radioactive water from running over the hot coriums, from running over the melted fuel rods, from running over the fission products, right? You think about how they built that power plant, that military industrial complex's directed energy weapon production facility, because they make isotopes, right? That's what it's all about. It's got nothing to do with power. It's a byproduct of it. And it's killing the ocean on top of that. If, if nuclear power never had an accident, if nuclear power never had a problem, ever, if it always ran perfect, it's still going to boil everything alive in the ocean at some point. A million gallons a minute. There's not just one reactor at these places. It's extraordinary. They're releasing stuff in your community all the time. And they equate it with bananas, which is homeostasis. They equate it with walking in the sunshine. We've got nothing to do with ingesting radioactive hot particles. They equate it with getting a dental x-ray. We've got nothing to do with ingesting radioactive hot particles. They sequester in your body. They get into your organs. They cause lesions to your organs. They go right to your heart. Cesium-137 goes right into your heart. The strontium will go right into your bone. Let me keep going. Friggin' pissed off. Spike in radiation level for the West Coast. Abnormal readings of 8 of 18 EPA monitors for California, Oregon, Washington. And the voice is now undergoing quality review. That was uh, March 22nd, 2011. Remember, three days before that, Health Canada flew along the coastline and found a fucking plume the entire coastline of Canada for 18 hours at 750 feet. Two days later, they took all the EPA monitorings down in California, Oregon, and Washington. Remember, at all the hot buckyballs and particles per cubic meter, right along the entire coastline. And Canada done the same thing on the 25th and 26th. They took down all their watch stations. The Americans beat them by a couple of days. Whatever the Americans do, the Canadians will do it right away. Arkansas milk 300% above EPA's maximum containment limit for radioactive iodine. What about for containment limits for uranium? What about the containment limits for plutonium and the strontium and the cesium and all their daughters? Assholes? Let me keep going. So, 
University of Texas researcher Fukushima released so great that radioactive aerosols in Washington were up to 100,000 times normal. 100,000 times normal. 7,500. See, what they call normal is 7,500 Beckwolds. But it's actually potassium-40, and that is normal. You drink it, you off-gas that. You drink cesium, you accumulative. It's electronic. It's a... Uh, it's electrically charged, right? It's, 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 it loves your, it's so tiny, it's so small. It has no problem getting through the liners of your lungs, the liner in your brain, the membranes. Hang on, I open my watch, make sure I'm still streaming. Every once in a while I'll be yakking for a half an hour and I'm actually not even streaming. Ugh. I think we're pretty good at it by now. 130 shows or something, one hour shows. Lots of screw ups. Um, let me keep going. Everything looks good. Zoe was dancing. Yeah, she wanted to get into it. Okay, let me keep going. We're... Go, 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 Dana. Keep going. 100,000 times, 10,000 to 100,000 times greater than normal levels in the week following the March 11th earthquake. Do you think that this stuff doesn't wash right back out into the community constantly? That's not logged in here and wash back out on top of that? to rain? Do you really think that way? Do you really think that three melted reactors hemorrhaging into the atmosphere, aerosoling, think about a gram of it, produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet? Like, let that sink into your friggin' head of how many hundreds of thousands of pounds was down there. Try to do calculations on how much is in the atmosphere, how much truly actually went into the upper atmosphere. Remember, the troposphere is a friggin' ocean. The cesium, yes, it gets saluted in the water, but it's, I mean, the cesium that's coming out of Japan is going to go right back to Japan. It's saluted in the water, it becomes part of the water, it doesn't lose its energy. These radioactive, that's what makes these stuff so friggin' scary. They don't just turn to sawdust. If they did, we wouldn't have any issues with any nuclear plants on the planet. We know how to treat it, put it in water, and dilute it, right? Kill it off, right? You can't even pour battery acid over this stuff, and it'll just liberate it. If you had radioactive isotopes on your hands, you pour battery acid over it, you would destroy your hand, but you would liberate that radioactive material, those particles, those atoms. If you had... That radioactive material, when you took your hand, it was radiated, and you put it in an incinerator and burnt your hand at 4,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, you would liberate those particles and those radioactive atoms. But, oh, yeah, you put it in the ocean, it's just going to disappear, Dana. See, he's talking about only probably a release from Unit 1 and a single-day release, like almost all the other peer-reviewed academic studies you see out there. Right? That's their game. Don't include the fact that it's leaking out there, hemorrhaging nonstop, constantly into the ocean. No, forget about that. Forget about that. Big controversy about the tuna. Keep throwing that one out there. What about the polar bear? You know, what about polar bears? What about all the polar bears? What about them? What about all the birds and the insects on the coastline? What about all the marine life? What about penguins, you know? What about... The creatures that live in the kelp forest. What about all the little mollusks? What about all the sea anemones? What about all the uh, the gu gooey ducks? What about all the clams? What about the razorbacks? What about the shrimp? What about all of those friggin' creatures? All that stuff washing back out of your country. Everything on the west side of the Rocky Mountains is going to wash out into the Pacific. And on the east side is going to wash down into the Atlantic of the Rocky Mountains. And so all this stuff has to wash back, not all of it, but a lot of it's going to wash back down to the ocean. And if you've got big rivers, you go down to that ocean, you'll find the carnage. But no, he's going to study that he's never done none of this, nothing like this before. Then he's going to get published. Then he's up on everything. He's up on all the major media out there, getting all kinds of traction. And nobody bothers saying what about all this other stuff. And he's not going to say nothing. And the peer review academic study is locked away. And you can rent it for 48 hours for $35, but you don't get to keep it. You paid for it. You paid for these little gamers, these little Batman freaks, and their other cronies, their shit watchers. 
and the old sawhorse, Catherine, the old war, war hog, the old run down uh, basketball. That's all she is. She's like a blown up basketball. Everybody's kicked around forever. Right? And she says, oh, nothing from Fukushima. That's, that's cancer patients peeing. That's why we're getting the extra radiation. And yet uh, they're, they're getting more grants because they're good little idiots. They're good little video gamers. They're useful idiots. Where's all your nuclear scientists? Why do we got little monkeys like you doing peer review studies and getting, getting traction? What about the nuclear scientists? How come they ain't doing fucking studies? How come they ain't screaming bananas? They ain't screaming insignificant background radiation? Because we can come out and torture them. What we're doing to you is just, you're getting roasted because you need to learn your spot in this world. And it's not out lying and making a mockery of what your parents paid for. Your parents paid for everything you're fucking doing. You're an embarrassment to them. What about the crabs? What about the mussels? You know, what about uh, mermaids? Maybe you should go get some, do a study on mermaids. There you go, Devin, Neville. You and the crew down at Oregon should go out and see how much cesium-137 are in mermaids. Maybe you should do a real study, like figure out how to get all the trucks out of your country. Because trucks are so dangerous when you had a truck fire at the WIP repository, they never went back down for nine days. They're a lot more dangerous than your tuna shit, right? So maybe you can do something worthwhile and figure out how we can get all these trucks and put them in sarcophaguses till the end of time, because they're so fucking dangerous, you couldn't get down into Carlsbad, New Mexico, WIP depository for nine days when they had that, and then they had a radiation release, so they didn't have to go back down nine days later on Valentine's Day, right? And it, and it works out that all the academics out there, they hide away, and they send out these little video heads, little poop watchers, the little war horses for the nuclear apologists, like Catherine, Right, to put out little studies, they got some pocket money, they're working their way up the table, soon they can get out from underneath the table and from multitasking, and they can actually, you know, maybe just give them a bunch of money, let them go and study mermaids and see how much cesium 137 they're accumulating, because, you know, they're, they stay in areas for a long period of time, so if there's radiation there, the mermaids will tell us. I would like that, that'd be cool. I, I, I would like to read that study. I'll pay $35 to read that one for 48 hours. Yeah? And while you're at it, you can look at the otters and see how they're friggin' fending. And sea snakes, maybe. And mussels, of course. I love mussels. Ugh, I love mussels. Mm. You know, when I was diving on the ocean floor, I used to eat scallops right out of the shell. I uh, shouldn't say that, I suppose. But... No, Dana, don't eat me. Too late. Dump, dump. I used to eat, say, 20 sea urchins a day on the ocean floor. Just whip my regulator out of my mouth. Yum, 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 cotton candy. That's what I used to call that stuff. Sea urchins are like eating cotton candy to me. They're extraordinary. They're around 1400 bucks a kilogram during the Chinese New Year, the Japanese New Year. 1400 bucks a kilogram. Highly sought after, obviously. It's like an aphrodisiac, apparently. But I would eat 19 to 20 of them every day minimum. And I would eat five or six scallop right off the ocean floor, tear their guts right off them, scoop them out. They didn't even know they were dead. And even if I was wearing a Pegasus, the full face, just pull it out, flood the friggin' thing, put in three or four big old scallops, <laughs> purge out the water, oh, oh, oh. eat one at a time. Rather than come up aboard the boat, because I could go through nine tanks a year a day, right? That's two marathons in the human body every day. I've probably done more work in one day on the ocean floor than Devil Neville, the devil, from Oregon University, ever done in his entire friggin' life, more physical work. All he sat around watching the guy who was the expert in poop and watching the expert in nuclear apologist, Catherine. Like, he's a nobody. I, I, I went looking for his study. I can't find Jack on that guy. I found lots on the other two. And then the third one, he, um, what was his name? Richards. Richard D. Brodeur. He had four crappy ones. We keep going. Um, you know, there's all these animals and creatures and little communities and micro communities and mini communities. Hang on, Zoe. We're almost finished, Zoe. I'll let you out here in a second, okay? 
Let me keep going. Hot particles found at two out of three U.S. monitoring stations during April. By the way, I haven't got 4,000 chemicals in my cigarette, and there's no filter on it. The filter makes the particles smaller. They can get through the liners of your lungs. The 4,000 chemicals are in your cigarettes, right? The university, like Oregon, they've done all kinds of studies on how nicotine will give you cancer. They've never been able to prove it, even after four decades, five decades. But I bet you if you've done a study on the 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette, they would find it. But they wasted so, like, billions and billions and billions of your tax dollars trying to leak tobacco to cancer, and they can't. But if they looked at the 4,000 chemicals that are in everybody else's cigarettes, but not mine, then you would find the reason why everybody was getting cancer and why these things are so fucking dangerous. But see, the universities are not there to do that. They're PR machines for the corporation, for the military industrial complex. Just like nuclear power plants, all they actually do is make, if they can't make weaponized isotopes or directed energy weapons, then they won't exist. You don't need the, the, the fuel mixtures you got right now to create power. You made power 50, 60 years ago with just irrelevant isotopes. And like you had in Russia in the 1940s, 7,500 communities evacuated permanently and 9,000 square miles evacuated permanently. Permanently. Because of nuclear waste. And the isotopes are creating right now, Japan, from one end to the other end is 300,000 to a million becquels per square meter. Per square meter. Tokyo is done. And they're, they're digging up topsoil where the hot particles found, fell in the area, trucking that to other prefectures and burning it in incinerators and liberating that back into the communities and the coastlines and the oceans. And not only that, that we've seen the peer review studies of the Trans-Pacific Pollution Transport, of just urban pollution from cities, how that makes its way across and contributes to North America's pollution indexes. And we've seen how force fires cross the oceans. These are huge, massive particles. Fukushima is not stop hemorrhaging. They can't get down there. They can't get in there. You're not going to see no pictures at Fukushima of scaffold connection or steeple jack putting up scaffolds. You're not going to see anybody down there with cutting torches, working on those buildings, because they will die. Because those buildings detonated and sprayed the entire surrounding and each other with large chunks of rods, ionized rods, release neutrons and x-rays and horrible, horrific gammas, alphas and betas uh, emitters, right? And you got it going into the ocean like St. Paddy's Day every friggin' minute. Imagine the, the, the darkest river, the most brightest river you've ever seen from a St. Paddy's Day video or picture. That's happening every single minute. More than that, what they used to create that river die, more than that, is going into Fukushima or into the Pacific Ocean every minute. It doesn't stop going in there. How do, it's not a plume that came out of there, traveled across the ocean, everybody's watching it. This is a plume that just never stops. It ain't gonna stop. It can never stop as long as people like Oregon and the rest of them are, 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 and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, which is uh, uh, outrageous lawyers unimaginable lawyers who keep equating man-made radioactive isotopes with bananas, with potatoes, with drinking water. It has to stop. We can't keep going this route. It's not going to go away. It's not going to stop the carnage. It's not going to stop the damage. You can't just switch it off. Your job is to go do what we paid you to do and find solutions and identify the problems and the issues, not turn off all your detecting devices on the coastline. Not turn your back on it, not put it under national security alert, not roll out the Oregon freaks to make a mockery of the academics and their parents' investments and their friends' and their loved ones' admiration, not to make a mockery of that, but to do your job, to actually look at other parts of this equation. Hot particles found at two out of three U.S. monitoring stations during April 2011, including Boston. There will be an increase in cancer, especially on the West Coast. Hot radioactive particles in Seattle were at 50% of the level seen in Tokyo, and it latches onto your lungs. There's nowhere to run. 
June 8, 2011. April 24, 2014, new data shows spikes in babies born missing parts of their brains around leaking U.S. nuclear sites. They're all leaking. They're all hemorrhaging into your community from the spent nuclear fuel pools where all this friggin' stuff is vented in your community. It looks like steam. It's invisible. You can't smell it, see it, hear it, feel it, taste it, pick it up. Make patty cakes with it. So you're going to get a bunch of mermaids and test them for this radionuclide, you probably see the truth. I'm going to go see if I can get some money and do a study myself on new, on mermaids and trucks and bananas. Blah. Officials, we're really concerned it remains so high. We hoped it would go away. Yeah, they'll make it go away, right? They'll make it go away. Uh, Devin Neville will make it go away, and Jason Phillips will make it go away, and the creatures like Richard Bordeaux and Catherine Higley will make it go away by coming out and lying, manipulating to get a paycheck and to get some accolades. It's disgusting. Let me keep going. i got a couple more here. Da, 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 da. Where the hell did I get all this shit? Uh-oh. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Portland had cesium at a hundred becquels a square meter. University researcher Portland area topsoil had 8,000, um, over 10,000 percent higher levels Found by UC Berkeley uh, radioactive materials, 10,000% higher than what UC Berkeley. I got a big folder there on UC Berkeley. What a freaking bunch of lawyers they are. Sick, twisted, demented, unimaginably sick people. Spiking re radiation levels for the West Coast, abnormal readings. I mean, when you think about that headline, for 8 out of 18 uh, Environmental Protection Agency, and remember the Environmental Protection Agency when they were created in 1981 when they hung their shingle outside their door, they grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals, all the chemicals they had with no environmental, no human impact study. So they got no, they got no uh, credibility, period. Most of these were carcinogenic and still are. They've never went back and tested them. 65,000 chemicals. That's why you're allowed to have 4,000 chemicals legally in your cigarette. It's because the EPA grandfathered in everything. Oh, fuck it. Just grandfathered it all in. Right? They got no credibility. State of Arizona, you know, they got no credibility. They never even come out and told you, by the way, we're introducing 7,400 Beckwells a cubic meter of cesium-137 into your drinking water. And at the same time, you got Oregon putting out studies saying, ah, there's no cesium to be found anywhere. Like, it's, it's, you know, they're seeding everything out there. U.S. secretly asked Japan to help dump nuclear reactors in the ocean in 1972. Right? They're maniacal. They know it's bad. They got 45,000 barrels dumped off the coastline of California, and all right in that where all the seals and sea lions are dying, and they're blaming that on, on measles and mumps. 45,000 barrels. Salt water going to rush the shit of that in no time. Over half of them have breached, they know. 45,000 barrels of uranium-238 is contaminated with plutonium and americium, neptunium. Very long life, very dangerous. Uh, just endless types of radioactive material. Britain was doing it. Britain's got Sellafield leaching 8 million liters a day into the ocean. It used to be called Winfrey, but they changed the name after the accident to Sellafield, so they can bury it. In Iraq, they're firing 5 million rounds a month. 5 million bullets a month. Look it up, you'll find a government link to a government website. 5 million bullets a month, and they wanted to increase production to 2 billion extra bullets a, a year. But 5, billion, 5 million bullets a month, most of them came out of McAllister's bomb manufacturer in McAllister, Oklahoma. McAllister, and they're putting out 20 train car loads a day, uranium-238, ionized, and they're firing that in the poor people's countries. These are dirty bombs. 
That's the 20 train cars is the animosity equivalent of 166,000 Nagasaki bombs. Think about a warthog, A-10 warthog shoots, you know, the military uh, low-flying plane. It shoots a ton and a half of uranium-238 a minute. They're releasing the radioactive atoms as they burn off going through the air at an amazing amount. Hundreds of trillions. And then, you know, uh, 70, uh, 71 Nagasaki bombs a minute is the equivalent, the animosity equivalent radiation uh, from the A-10 Warthog per minute. 71 bombs a minute of uranium. Right? They're releasing that. They're, they're shooting that, those dirty bombs into poor people's homes, poor people's cars, hospitals, schools, institutions, distribution centers. It's into the farm, it's into the water, it's into the land. It's found in the Alps within a year in core samples. And I bet you can find a lot of core samples from Fukushima if you went looking up in the mountains. You get some serious core samples in North America. And so we're, we're left now with the media putting these people up on the pedestal. And then you can't have a conversation with anybody. Because idiotic gamers and Twitter heads and shit watchers and old sawhorses like Catherine are out there who never done any research on any of this before gets all kinds of traction. Well, that's not that's not good enough for me. I can't sit there and take that shit anymore. I'm not going to. And so that's why I done what I done tonight. You got to come out. You got to call these people out. You got to stand up and get counted. You can't be a little Twitter head and a video gamer and a Batman and Robin, Superman and do real work, do real science. you got to dedicate yourself to do that kind of stuff. We've covered, uh, you know, the numbers are around 8,000 headlines on this site about Fukushima and radioactive material, nuclear accidents. They have nuclear accidents on the average of two or three times every friggin' year around this planet. 400... 40 nuclear plants on this planet and they're all hemorrhaging into the oceans and into your river and then they're leaching from the fuel pools into your community about 120,000 liters a day. The sickest, twistedest, most demented industry on the planet is sucking the very life out of Earth. It's destroying the very foundation of the food cycle and the oxygen cycle on this planet. Not only that, they're boiling all the creatures in the ocean at the same time in the rivers. They're sterilizing our water on our on our planet and they're getting rid of the very foundation of life itself. The radioactive fallout is non-stop. It's been going on. They want to blame it on anything but this. So they can keep their paychecks, so they can keep their pensions, so they can keep their money coming in, so they can keep making directed energy weapons. It's not just North America. It's Russia. It's China. It's Pakistan. It's India. It's Israel. It's every country. France. It's Canada. It's all these freaking countries out there that have never been able to build a sarcophagus to put this stuff in, but keeps producing endless messes to the point where we got three cubic kilometers of it, miles of it. Three cubic miles. There's enough radioactive material out there right now. Let's see if I can find it. To cover West Virginia, the entire state, Rhode Island. Connecticut, New Jersey, Hawaii, New Hampshire, Delaware, and Vermont, the entire states, in one inch of ground up rods and radioactive material from the waste. They got nowhere to put it. If they were to do that and spread it out one inch in all those states, it would cook you like an oven from the neutrons and the x-rays. It would cook you to death right on the, right on the spot. You run down the road on top of one inch of this stuff, you wouldn't get it very far. Just... And that's sitting into our environment, hemorrhaging to our environment. And all we got, to, all we got to do is deal with it. Tomorrow, if we took forty-eight hundred peer-reviewed academic studies and put them to fucking work on this, we could deal with a lot of these issues. But we won't even face up to it. Too busy with Superman, Batman, and Twitter, and taking people that got no right being doing these studies and getting this traction and giving them a platform and put them on a pedestal when they deserve neither. I don't want to be doing this, okay? This is not fun. There's no fun in this. 
this is is shocking that I have to do this. It's shocking that we have to do this. It's shocking that everybody below my video and on my video is here tonight because they understand that we got to do this. It's frightening. Go look at Nubu Magic 2012. Go look at Miss Milky. Go look at Rad Chick, climate viewer, an academic herself, who actually looks for the facts and finds them and shares them and does an extraordinarily, you know, amount of work to accomplish it. She produces more peer-reviewed studies on her own than all these scientists together. But because she's uh, accurate stuff, because they, they don't even try. They turn their back on what they're putting. You know, they have this position, this opportunity to do something right. And they're too busy with their video games. They're too busy with their fantasies of Superman and Batman. And, but they get all that traction. We, it can't sustain itself any longer. Okay, the, the days for that, those easy rides are gone. The nuclear industry, it's gone. Might as well give it up right now. Because if not, we're going to prosecute you for war crimes against humanity and the planet and Earth itself. This is, like, we're not going away. You might be able to get rid of me, but we're not going away. This planet is rising up. There's tons of links below. Tons of people below. Amazing people. Um, once again, folks, I went right straight down the line. We're all the way up to an hour and a minute. I'll come in and say goodnight to everybody. I'm sorry I didn't realize it went past my time. Sherry, some people are standing up to their government, Sherry, yeah. Hi, Spider Guy, MSVS, Nevermore, Cats Alive, Nuts for Art, Standing Foot, You Stayed Awake, Bud, Good for You, You Could Cat Me No More, I understand, okay? That's why we, I do live just because it's convenient, but I mean, the video's here for everybody for later at your own time. It's nice to see you all here, don't, don't get me wrong. Grandma Goldie, Mr. I can see too. What happened to Dana? Candace says, I don't know. Miss Milky the Cloud. We love Miss Milky. Nuts for Arts, everybody. Kate, we love Kate. And I start off, make sure you go watch Kate's video down below. And there's the Fukushima Hound site she's got there. A chat room and information boards. It's a really nice little spot. And once again, folks, Irinarel, Cats Alive, everybody. I'm going to come in and read your comment. Nubro Magic was here and visited us again tonight. Lunar is here. Uh, Pizom. I can't pronounce your name, I'm sorry. Uh, Perzun. P R Z U N. Hi, DJ. Bezal, everybody. Good night. We'll catch you tomorrow night. Yeah, Night Kids. Nubro Magic says, Night Kids. I agree. Because we got the moral high ground, right? We don't lie, we don't manipulate, we don't deceive, we don't exaggerate. Why can't they? I don't know. Well, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Hopefully it'll be a lot earlier. It's been a long day, but that's okay. We just had to get the kinks out of some of these systems. And my computer's going to freeze on me? Maybe not.